Hey everybody, Matt the Grower. Nice to see you again. I know it's been a while, but I assure you the wait will be well worth it. I want to take a moment first off to say thank you. Thank you for stopping by and checking out the Sure to Grow channel. Well over a million views and well over 2,500 subscribers later, we feel like we have kind of changed the face of uh, hydroponic education by bringing you our series of videos. And you know, although the Sure to Grow videos do provide a solid foundation to teach you how to be a better indoor gardener, what we're about to bring you is an education on lighting. And you say to yourself, self, I think I know all there is to know about lighting. I did too. I thought that about two years ago. And then I stumbled upon something with the Sure to Grow guys. And uh, as, a, as a result of that, the last two years have been heavy in the R&D trying to tweak and modify and refine this already existing technology that is about to blow your mind. And you say, what, what could it possibly be? I'm going to tell you, it's an induction light. That's right. Nikola Tesla, genius, you know, American patents, you know, former rival of Edison, head of technology in the late 19th, 19th century, early 20th century, called the induction light. And it's a filamentless, electroless light in which energy is induced through an envelope and excites a mercury amalgam on the inside, which generates light. And you're like, that sounds like magic. It is like magic. Can you give us a little bit of a primer on the different types of lights currently available and why the induction light is far superior? And I'll be happy to do that. Let's first talk about what most of you are using right now. These are high intensity discharge lights. These lights are really, really reckless and irresponsible when it comes to their energy use. Do they grow great plants? Absolutely. That's why people use them. But there should be some type of moral imperative that should be looked at when using these lights. Not only are you using a light that is excessive wattage, a thousand watts, you're also using one that's tremendously inefficient. So you're double dipping on the whoring out of this electricity. So let's take a look at how this lamp works and why this lamp is prone to catastrophic failure. This lamp design isn't really much different than one you would have seen 20 years ago. This is a standard metal halide um, with a frequency that's been tuned for agriculture. As you can see, there's a tremendous amount of metal inner working on the inside of this lamp. You have your primary igniter, you have your secondary igniter, you have your standoffs, which keep your uh, support reeds away from the glass envelope. Here's your heat diffusion plate. Here's your um, solid state igniter coil at the bottom. Here is your arc tube. Um, and then here is what we call a getter. A getter is put into a metal halide lamp and an HPS lamp to pull out all the remaining impurities that are left because you can only pull so much vacuum on an envelope. So what I'm trying to tell you is this lamp is broken from the factory. The moment you turn it on, due to the inherent nature of its design, it begins to aggrade. Not just because of the intense heat generated inside this lamp, which sometimes can be well over 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The problem also lies in the fact there are so many micro welds, so many junction points inside here. This whole structure is necessary to illuminate this arc tube. And how does that work? We pound this solid state electrode at the bottom with 20,000 hertz. That harmonic frequency, when driven through this type of solid framework, will lead to microstructure failure, fissures, and eventually arcing, which could lead to catastrophic failure. The lamp could actually explode. So we have these exceptionally high power ballasts pounding this lamp over and over and over again to the point where the harmonics begin to break down the welds and the, the lamp actually degrades from the inside. So I ask myself every day, why would I pay $110, $120, $130 for a lamp that from the time I plug it in begins to fail? So how is this dramatically different from our lighting technology? What we have here is an induction light and you say to yourself, this doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. And don't feel bad, uh, two years ago I'd never heard of it either, you know. Through chance happenstance and, uh, you know, just good fortune, we were able to meet up uh, with the premier manufacturer of induction lighting in America and develop this technology. What we have are two large electromagnets. And what makes this lamp unique is it's electrodeless. There is no infrastructure inside this glass envelope, none whatsoever. In fact, what happens is we charge these electromagnets and we begin to induce that magnetic field through the glass envelope. And that's the magic of it. That's the David Blaine of the induction light. How do you pass energy 
through an envelope. Well, you do it with a large electromagnet. So once that energy is inside this envelope, it excites the mercury amalgam contained in this little piece here. That mercury amalgam, then uh, the outer energy shell becomes excited, producing UV light. That UV light then is absorbed by the internal phosphor coating. That phosphor coating is then excited, producing light. What makes that unique is because there are no working or moving parts inside this, it is electroless, and therefore 100,000 hours. 100,000 hours on the lamp, five years on the ballast. And you say, why hasn't anyone brought this to market before? They're scared. Where's the money? If you're not replacing your lamps every six months and your ballast every year, how do I generate revenue? The bottom line is what we've done is we have focused on bringing the gardener the best technology that we possibly can find, regardless if we can generate more sales. We want it to be the best that you can buy. And this is what we have here. This induction light has not been brought to market. It's been kept from you because of the fear that it lasts too long. Look at any type of manufacturing out there. Engineered obsolescence is part of the method of operations. They build failure into their products, so you have to buy more. That just doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't sound right to the people I work with. So we're giving you an induction light, five years, no questions asked. If your lamp fails, we'll give you a new lamp, no problem. I think the comparison is obvious between the two. If you want to grow like a dinosaur, stay in the Stone Age and use technology that's, you know, uh, hasn't been improved upon for horticulture for over 40 years, or you take a technology that has a solid foundation in industry throughout China, throughout Europe, used in industrial buildings, warehouse applications, with a 0.04% failure. Why would I use something that's broken out of the box when I can use something that's going to last 100,000 hours? I mean, the choice is obvious. You want an induction light. It's okay. Everyone does. Anyway, Matt the Grow Guy, thanks for stopping by. Have a great one. Peace.